Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and I got here the pocket watch. Uh, I'm doing the basically, I'm basically going to do the weekly video and I got a couple questions I, uh, this week and I just want to make sure that I can really explain it. Last week I tried to explain the saturation diary very, uh, as best as I could and uh, there's a couple uh, questions that I got that are reoccurring and I just want to make sure that I, um, that I, ex I explain this pro properly. But um, the first thing is... CFDOC, why is it? Why was it? Uh, why was it overbuilt? Can you explain how using a in-house movement factors into this and some of the benefits of using an in-house movement? Very good. So, uh, as you know, that uh, all the automatic watches from Orient, uh, Orient Watch they use their own in-house movement. For for you guys who doesn't know what a, a movement looks like, I just open the back of a watch, take a look. This is our in-house movement. This entire mechanism over here is made by Orient. It's not something that's purchased, it's something that they have built themselves. They've assembled it. If you talk with many watch manufacturers or watch people, this creation of this thing is the watch making. Everything else is dressing and uh, casing and whatnot. That's still part of watch making, but that assembly process is, um, how do you say, it's not as mechanical, it's not as, uh, it doesn't require as much thought as it does to building a movement. Uh, now, what I mean by overbuilt was the sapphire crystal that they use on the uh, on the uh, CFDOC, which is the saturation diver, is five millimeters thick approximately. Now, what does that mean? Hold on, I'm trying to give you a cool angle. What does five millimeters mean? It means that the chances of water getting in there is almost nil. And on top of that is that uh, it's so the, the the steel is so tight helium doesn't even get inside. So when I went by overbuilt was this, they decided to go beyond average industry standards and went beyond it so that they didn't have to use an industry standard prevention tool like a helium escape valve. They just decided to overbuild, and that's what I really meant. Um, and I just want to make sure that I clarified on that. Uh, and uh, just so you guys know, this, this thing, what, what is commonly called the rotor, is not exactly the rotor. This is the oscillating weight. The rotor is this guy right over here. You'll see that the, um, this is a balance wheel. You'll see that if, well obviously you can't see it, but it's oscillating six times per second, which is giving that seamless, seamless second hand, uh, sweeping second hand, because it's pivoting once every six seconds. And so um, that's a really important part. See right there, the plus and minus. This is part of the timing device of the movement. And, um, and this is a Mako, guys. Uh, one thing that's really great to know about a Mako is that they use a metal, uh, a movement, uh, a metal movement holder. Now, this, for the, at this price, to have something metal is absolutely phenomenal. Typically, it is, um, it's made of plastic at this level, at this price level at least. So uh, having something metal like this, not only do you have all the high options of the casing parts like the band and the case, but even the movement holder next to the movement is well built. So it's a really, it's a really well made watch. Okay, now the second thing, actually there's three things that we have to go over, but the second thing is I want to announce the winner of the newest video. I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the screen too. Your name is Noman57, okay? And the previous winner uh, in the other one was Griffin 7 Up. So uh, for those who, uh, who are waiting for the announcement, the announcement is done in this video. Okay, and second question is, is it true that Orient automatic movements do not have uh, manual winding because they're self-winding movements? And are, that, that, uh, because these self-winding movements are more efficient without, without that mechanism. Yes and no, okay? so. Uh, just so you guys know, when people say, why is Orient Watch's rotor so heavy? I know, heavy, so loud. You hear it now. You hear little creaks, because I had the mic right over there, so just so they could hear it. There's a ball bearing uh, system in here, folks. A ball bearing system. So it takes so much less energy for the, um, for the oscillating, uh, for the oscillating weight to, to move. And so, um, that's the reason why uh, Orient watches have slight have a slightly louder sound on the rotor. 
And on, and on top of that, um, the reason why it's such an efficient self-winding system is because of the ball bearings. This is one of the coolest thing is, things about Orient watches that you can never explain to a customer because they've never seen inside a movement. They don't know exactly what they're taught, uh, uh, what in a movement is. But looking at this example, um, it is one of the most efficient rotors. Uh, you can take a look at the. Um, at the School of Horology video underneath this video, uh, actually not underneath this video, but that goes along with every product page. It'll explain to you what the ball bearing system is and, the, uh, and, the, and why this basic and more simpler system is a better piece. Now, this does not mean that it's uh, that we don't need mechanical, uh, mechanical wa uh, winding watches. Uh, in the future, I believe next year, we're gonna start making uh, most of our movements hackable and windable by the crown. You know, one of the first steps to that was to build this watch. Now, folks, this watch is our f one of the first Orient movements that has a hackable second hand as well as windable by the crown. This one over here, as you can see, has no oscillating weight. There is no automatic winding system on this watch. In fact, it, all it does Really, it has a power reserve indicator, a power, a power reserve indicator located right over here, as well as um, as as well as uh, winding and a hackable second hand. So this is step one. This was introduced earlier this year, late last year. So now the second step is now to introduce this technology among all of our watches. And so that's the that's the answer for uh, for why we don't have a winding system. Well, there's two answers. Well, this is the second answer. We are, we're working on it. And the first answer was, yeah, we do have a more efficient winding system, but that's not the reason why we don't have a uh, manual winding. So, uh, hope this has been <laughs> an informative video. Uh, I know many of you guys don't get to take a look inside uh, a mechanical watch, you know, so. I do one 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 of these days. I just want to rip one completely apart. That way, you guys can really understand what we're talking about. What why movements are movements. And uh, oh, I want to let you guys know one more thing. It's a, it's something that's been happening quite a lot. And I just want to make sure um, if you have one of these watches that you could take this time to for me to give you this warning. See the um, this is a wind uh, a winding crown. You see right now the power reserves at twenty. Take a look as I'm winding the crown. And you can see that I'm almost close to 30. Now these are units of hours, folks, okay? This means that it's gonna run for 30 hours. Every hour it's gonna go down increments of one. And if I wind the crown, I'm giving it, uh, I'm basically fueling it up, giving it gas. One thing I want you to remember, guys, is that when you pull out for the time, don't yank it out really, really hard. Uh, we've received a couple repairs that people pulled on this way too hard, thinking that it's some sort of uh, a large mechanical piece. No, it's a delicate piece, folks, so go ahead and give it the respect that it deserves and so that you can wear it for a really, really long time. All right, folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with my weekly video. Hope to see you wearing Orient Watch soon.